88.1 XFM Tauranga Tent Music Station. Also, another episode of Mike Time with Marty Home Edition. I've got another TikTok uh, creator here who's got an astounding 240.9 thousand followers and an astounding 34.9 million likes. Say hello to Brandon. What's up, y'all? How y'all doing tonight? <laughs> <laughs> or pretty much better said good afternoon from my area so <laughs> yeah and it's good morning for us so <laughs> it's crazy. awesome it's my first time seeing someone with someone from New Zealand so that's pretty cool hey awesome <laughs> uh, so what got you started on TikTok I'm not gonna lie I was literally just like on Instagram and I was like looking at memes and stuff right and I see this thing called TikTok, and everyone's talking about TikTok, TikTok this, TikTok that. I'm like, I don't know what the big deal with TikTok. And I come from, like, the Vine era, so, like, I'm always, like, watching old Vine clips, you know, King Bog, you know, all that good stuff back then, right? So I download TikTok, and I'm like, oh, this is kind of the same thing, except it's longer, there's a little bit more options to it, and you're not restricted to that six-second thing like Vine, which is the reason I didn't really create online. I hated the six-second thing. So now that I see that there's a platform where you can just be yourself and – perform more than 10 for more than six seconds, use a bunch of different sounds, connect with a bunch of creators. I was like, sure, why not? Let me make some videos for fun for my friends and stuff. And I made videos and some of them were actually blowing up. I'm like, wow, people from like other countries are seeing this. They find this hilarious. So I kept going and it eventually grew and grew uh, to the point where I'm, I'm at now where I basically have two pages at 200,000 followers or, or 200,000 followers or more. So, uh, pretty cool. Uh, so just doing it for fun and like everyone else doing it for fun and see how they just somehow score with favorite. <laughs> so, what's your favorite type of videos to make? Realistically, I'm open to a lot of types of videos. I'm open to pretty much anything. So my favorite types are the ones with popular sounds. I feel like those are the ones that everyone will see mainly because of how popular they are, obviously. But I feel like they're popular for a reason. And I agree, they're funny, they're engaging. Like my favorite, my last favorite sound that I totally enjoyed was the adult swim trend. That was one of the greatest trends uh, so far. Uh, but the sound is what gets me going on creating videos. I love those. Uh, my previously favorite kind of thing to make was a text message video, which is a second account is based on straight text message with voiceover. Uh, so that's my second favorite thing to make, mainly because I like reading those weird text messages. Sometimes they're real, sometimes they're not. But for, for TikTok reasons, they're not real. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, I've actually seen a few of your videos and. Almost every third one is one of either TikTok banning one of your videos or something like that. How do you how do you deal with that? Because I've only really had that happen to maybe once or twice. So yeah, uh, normally for most accounts it doesn't happen often, but a lot of people, as sad as it is, they tend to hate my second account because they find it really either how do I say it contentless or like dead it's not good for them they think it's, it's too easy and i don't deserve the like the follower base for it but the thing is i didn't even do it for follower base i just did it because i thought it was funny and yeah. it was my one niche that stuck with me uh so i definitely stopped doing it for a while because i kind of got bored of it but every video i posted there's always those two or three people commenting where's the text message, video? Where's the text message? <laughs> so it's like a lot of hate from people that don't enjoy it because they think it's it's kind of like Ben Select memes. I'm not sure if you know the creator of Ben Select. Yeah. But yeah, it, it, it's kind of like his memes, but I do it on my own. So a lot of people tend to hate it. So they, they tend to spam report it. Oh, I'm trying to make it break this one. They just like, oh, this guy got spam reported 10 times. Let's take it down for some god awful reason that makes no sense, right? So it's been like that recently to the point where people are like spam reporting and getting multiple. <laughs> Guidelines that for no reason either mm. because you look at the video right and it's fake like there's no way that this can violate your guidelines for this specific reason like the last one that got taken down was a fake text message of uh robert downey jr's twitter page saying oh it's me robert downey jr i want to visit you can i get your credit card so i can go visit you across the country and then i have steve evans or chris evans with me say hi hello this is chris evans the same guy right and they took it down for illegal activities and regulated goods. I'm like, 
this is a text message. I'm not even soliciting soliciting anything from anyone, you know? So it, it's just crazy. Like the guidelines are driving me nuts because I gotta be super careful. I, I have to deny fan requests because I know they'll get taken down for the simplest thing is having one word on there. Mm. Um, so I feel bad denying fan requests because they really want the memes up there, but like, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna risk my account getting taken down because that that one word or that one picture on there. So it's a lot of dealing just with the negativity from TikTok, but overall the positivity makes up for it, which is why yeah. I continue doing it. If it wasn't for that, I would have totally just quit doing the tax message stuff, but hey, there's a reason it's back, you know? It works out well. <laughs> so that's pretty much why I do it again. Uh, the second page is called Fruitcake City. It's yeah. a nickname I've had that stuck with me for a while, so I just named it that. So. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so speaking of Robert Downey Jr., you did a video of you using the green screen and there was a brownie behind you and you had that Robert Brownie Jr. That one got taken down too. I totally forgot about that. It got taken down too because it was harassment and bullying. <laughs> what? It got taken down for harassment and bullying. Apparently, I was harassing celebrities. I'm... Well, it was on my... Yeah, they restored it. I repealed it. I was like, there's no way that this violates your guidelines. Like, zero way that violates your guidelines. Oh, my God. I repealed it. I won. You know, it blew up a little bit on the For You page, a little bit more. But if it wasn't going to get taken down, it probably would have done better. But it is what it is, man, you know? Wow. So, yeah, I, I remember that one. That was really funny. It was like uh, Danny Dorito. And yeah. Brady was- Pitt. <laughs> yeah. But crazy man really crazy for that yeah that one's a good video i like that video <laughs> um so where do you see yourself in five years in five years i see myself living probably in a different city from tallahassee i'm based in tallahassee but I, a lot of my fans know that that i'm in tallahassee so i i, I kind of want to move to a bigger city where i can make more content that's driven towards i don't know more tourism I feel like I can connect better with people from outside of the country and inside of the country, obviously, that visit the city I live in. Um, but I just live in Tallahassee. The only people coming really here are like local college students. Florida. It's only Florida people coming to Tallahassee. So that's the real thing about it. Uh, but if I move to a bigger city where there's more foot traffic, I can make more content, definitely get, a, get like a series going where I can involve people. I feel like I want to do like a reaction video where I just go up to people asking them random questions or doing random skits with me. I just feel like I would be able to make better content if I lived in a bigger city. Yeah. Um, Cause when I was in Miami, I was able to drive out to downtown, meet people, never made content for TikTok, but it was more like my old page on, on Instagram. Um, but they're like my now deleted videos. Cause I didn't really find them that funny. I just did it cause I was too young. <laughs> but uh, my goal is to move to a bigger city. That's definitely one. And then to somehow cross a million followers on TikTok and keep it that way. <laughs> without my account getting banned for literally anything. Yeah. But but the goal is to have at least a, a million followers on, on TikTok. I think I can achieve that and maybe somehow become more well-known than I am right now. Like, I don't see myself as a celebrity. I just see myself as a guy that's on TikTok and people see me around, right? Like, that's, that's just the yeah. way. Like, there's, there's like people DMing me like, oh my God, you're famous. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm a regular dude. I, I work. <laughs> I work a salary job. I live with my wife. I live uh, in Tallahassee. I don't even live in like California or Los Angeles. I don't live in Los Angeles. I live in New York City. Like I live in a college town in the United States of America. Like I'm normal, just like the rest of everyone else on TikTok. So I try to keep myself humble and I try to make sure it stays that way. I feel like that's what makes me a better person and what stands out from what else. Is there. Yeah. I see myself being a bigger impact in the world in about five years. I hope I can do that. So that's my goal for now. Awesome. <clears throat> I've actually had people messaging me saying like, oh my gosh, like you're interviewing all these famous people from TikTok and from all these shows. It's like, you must be famous yourself. And I'm like, no, I'm just a normal person trying to make a living. So I saw your page. I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. He's got all these people. I know like at least four of them. I was like, damn, I might, I might even make a video after this show say thanks and everything that's, that's crazy like, like you know you've interviewed Vince, i didn't even know vincent was in tallahassee i just found that out recently. that yeah. was crazy you know? uh all that seeing all those creators on there was pretty cool i'm like hopefully this uh channel can be bigger so i definitely want to make a video on it so people can see what you're doing out here because what i think you're doing is pretty cool and special so 
Awesome, thank you. Yeah. Um, so who is a big inspiration for you? I'm not gonna lie, I've always asked myself that question, but I've never had an answer to it. Um, I'd say multiple people are inspirations for me. Like everyone has chipped into something into society that has made society great. So like there isn't that one person that's oh you're the best. I feel like everyone is the best. Everyone can make an impact like that other person. I feel like someone can make an impact as big as Michael Jordan did the same way they did, but another way. I feel like the way I'm doing it is I can make an impact on some people's lives just by reading text messages and making random memes. So personally, I don't have a like the most impactful person, but if I were to choose, I would definitely choose Michael Jordan because everyone sees him as a god, an ultra god, yeah. you know? Best basketball player of all time, you know, everyone sees him that way. Um, I feel like that's a good set point for most people that want to grow up to be like him because it's a good route that he took. So I feel like it sets a lot of people up that way. Um, but when it comes to impactfulness, I'd say it's everyone, all of us doing our part together to make Earth a better place. Mm. So like you doing the uh, the podcast is a great impact. You're connecting with creators around the world. That's awesome. You get to hear sides of me that people on TikTok can't hear because I don't have the platform that they see. They, they want memes, they want straight jokes from me. I can never be on TikTok being dead serious, looking at the camera like I am to you. This is how I feel about this app. This is how I feel making these videos. This is how I feel about doing all this stuff. So it's it's pretty nice to talk to someone about it when it comes to like explaining how you feel. Mm. Um, so to, to lean back towards the impact on this, I feel like people like that I hear you out or people that talk to you, give you advice, people that help you out with your business adventure. Those are all people that are impactful. So it's all of us pretty much being impactful, making us making the society a better place is what I believe is most impactful. But yeah. Awesome. Um, so <clears throat> when it comes to making videos, is there a, a certain way that you make them or do you just do them like off the chain? Depends on the content. Uh, realistically, 95% of my videos are off my brain. So I'm not sure how, how long you've been following me, but like <clears throat> since I started, I used to plan them. I used to think about, oh, let me write like scripts. Let me plan this ahead of the week. Let me make two or seven videos a, a week. So I just post one a day. And then as I grew and I saw people started finding me funny, I'm like, they're not really here for the planning because it's it's not good planning. It's just skewed and all that. They're here because I'm myself. Mm. So when it comes to making videos, I try to be as true as I am to my to my personal self. I feel like that is what people see in me and why they like me. Uh, I usually make random memes that come to my head because I think they're funny. And if, if some other people think they're funny and I've seen it before on For You pages, that means it's gotta be funny somehow to some other people, right? So it's really just off the top of my head. Like for example, the text message stuff was off the top of my head. I just recorded it and I was like, huh, let me add a funny voice filter that's not a chipmunk voice filter because that's annoying. So <laughs> I went with a synth one and that was off the top of my head, it blew up. That's how I found my niche, ironically. And then uh, pretty much off the other things off the top of my head were straight from audios of TikTok. Like I mentioned before, the sounds, they can generate so many ideas, mm -hmm. like a ton of ideas. It's just crazy that if you don't post on TikTok, like if you ever wanted to be somewhat famous or known, post on TikTok. It's the easiest method. All you have to do is post. Super fun. Um, so making videos is more just like a, a, a free-for-all. Not really yeah. to it. Just a hobby. Yeah, exactly. I treat it like a hobby. I, I like thinking of it as my main hobby, but that's what I do. It was, it was fun. I, I love how my content will genuinely change with the way my life goes. Mm -hmm. Like at one point, my content was just straight uh, delivery driver content because I was a delivery driver for six months after the pandemic. Um, so that was my content for a while. I switched it up. You know, now it's more like uh, random work from home stuff and <laughs> that. But yeah, pretty cool about it. <laughs> So who's one of your favorite creators on the app? Oof, a ton. I know one of my favorite is Matt Mosley. Uh, mm -hmm. I feel like he's one of the most pure guys out there. Uh, another creator that I can vouch for, oh my God, what's his name? I forgot. <laughs> okay, one of the creators I, I used to follow was Polo Boy. Mm -hmm. Polo Boy was one of my favorite, uh, favorite creators at the time. He, I, I followed him when he was small, and now he's just, I know the sensation on TikTok. Like he has a follower base. Yeah, 
way gone out there. <laughs> Polo's one of my favorite guys. Uh, his, his memes about New York and how living life up there is hilarious. I can never get over those those are like prime content. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite TikTokers from New York is actually the Ak Raw Money. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if you've seen him. He's the guy that says, show, show. And he's like, uh, nah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I actually went to New York. I went to his, his uh, deli or shop or convenience store, better said. And I met him. Oh. Sweet oh. down to earth guy. Awesome. <laughs> I, I asked him like, hey, man, I came all the way from Florida. Can I please make a video? With he's like, sure, sure. And he made the video on my phone and everything. Like, I even posted it. I'm surprised it didn't blow up. But uh, I made a bacon. What was it? A bacon cheeseburger uh, bacon chicken cutlet with a, a bacon cheeseburger with a chicken cutlet in the middle and that, that was one of the best things i've ever eaten man like <laughs> besides the experience being amazing that is legit one of the best things i've ever eaten and he showed me his family how they do how they live life how life is with, as a tiktok temptation the crazy thing is the people that are there don't know that he's a tiktok like famous person like he's just some people think he's a regular guy. He is a regular guy, but he also is very well known around the world. <laughs> it's crazy. I, I was like so happy to meet him and so happy for everything. I, I was so grateful that I even uh, tipped into his merch. He had he has merch in his deli. Oh. I bought a purple the Aki Way hat on it. It was super cool. I wore it around New York that one day. So uh, if you actually go on my Instagram, you can see the hat. It's really cool. I was wearing the hat in the rain and everything. It was really cool. Um, but he's like one of the most down to earth creators. Um, I love, I love, I love raw money. That's why I support him. So anything next time I go to New York, I'm definitely going to visit him again. <laughs> uh, I also liked world of t-shirts, um, pretty much before he was crazy famous. I don't know how I feel about him now. Like, I don't, I don't really mess with that charging your fans for videos, photos. Thing. I, don't, I don't really like that. Because mm-hmm. if someone would ever come up for a picture of me, I'd be like, what's up, man? I'm not charging. I'm not going to charge you anything, you know? Just how it is but he's a cool creator i think he has built a good flat platform he showed the world what new york's like and that's you know, pretty awesome can't complain about that right mm. so how many times have you been recognized for being on tiktok i would say twice once being in orlando i was at a festival uh edco orlando um it's a music festival for uh, dance music i was buying a beer and some guy ran up to me like, oh, you're the guy, you're the guy on TikTok. And the only reason he, he recognized me was because I made a video. Like the first viral video I made was a video about Miami, which is where I'm from, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, I made a viral video about stereotypes in Miami. And that blew up in, in Florida. So in that festival, and it blew up like a week before the festival. So people had seen my face before. And my look is pretty weird. Like I have this giant fuzzy block of hair and I got this really unconnected beard. So you can tell who I am uh, sometimes, but I was recognized at that festival. He's like, "You're the Miami guy. You're the you're the one that spoke Spanish and have choked." I'm like, "Yeah, that's me, that's me." And then a week later, I went to a bar in Tallahassee, and this uh, bartender recognized me from that same exact video. I'm like, "Dude, no way these people recognize you. That's insane." <laughs> and and I'm just like shook. I'm like, "How? Like, how do you remember me? Like, I'm not even famous. I don't mind you. I had." probably a thousand followers when that video blew up not even i probably had like 10 like 100 followers at that but it was crazy you know i was like <laughs> shocked that no one actually recognized me but since then no one has really recognized me i feel like a good portion of my fan base is overseas like only 50 percent of my followers are in the united states everyone else mm-hmm. is either in europe they're in australia they're in in asia india well they were in india before they got banned off the, the platform mm-hmm. but uh ton of people are across the world like i i never thought my videos would be blowing up in poland for example <laughs> people like them in poland and they understand it fluently i'm like wow that's insane um another popular country that i'm i'm big in is the uk like a lot of people mm. in the uk pick me i'm like wow never thought the uk <laughs> so it's a little it's a little crazy thinking like wow people around the world can see my face like i i started this snap map trend where people just add my snapchat so i can build my snap map right Mm-hmm. and a good portion of them are, are in europe united states and i now have people on my snapchat from abu dhabi uh, australia it's crazy oh wow. all these but yeah <laughs> a lot of people it's really cool yeah really how awesome it is yeah awesome <laughs> um 
what was your reaction when you hit your first million likes? I was shook. I was like, there. I never thought I would reach the level of a verified creator because only verified creators really get to that. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know how to react. I was like, holy crap, can I do this again? Do you think I can <laughs> get away with it? Like, maybe I can. I kept posting and posting. Like, two weeks later, I got another one with a million likes. And I was like, well, this right, will this wave continue? Well, am I going to be in the 40 page forever now? <laughs> it, it's just like, wow. Like, I'm surprised a million people actually found that content funny. And recently, I topped that record two, two weeks ago. My most liked video was now 2 million likes. Wow. So it's just insane. Like, your account does not stop with a notification. You just have random users saying they like this. You see random verified creators saying they like this. And I'm just like, wow. Never thought a verified creator would see my content, but hey, now they have, right? It's like, you think about it, like maybe Charlotte Amelia has seen one of my videos and said, what is this? You know, you never <laughs> Who knows? Maybe she's seen one of my videos. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> well, I actually just hit uh, 50,000 likes and that's insane, but you've almost got 35 million. So that's Yeah. Amazing. I'm not even going to lie. Enjoy the 50,000. Just hitting thousands of likes is awesome. Yeah, like when I hit my first thousand, I'm like, wow, people find me funny. I'm surprised yeah, people <laughs> actually like it. <laughs> but you're halfway to a hundred thousand, which is huge. A lot of creators actually struggle to get there. Mm. Like fifty thousand likes, and people struggle to get even that. So I feel like that is a huge milestone that people take for granted. When I had it, I took sc- I have screenshots from when I hit a thousand followers. I have screenshots from when I had six thousand followers. I was like, this is insane. Like, <laughs> have I made it on TikTok? Or, you know, it's. It's stuff like that that just makes you appreciate like social media. It's awesome. Yeah. Fifty grand. That's a good. That's a good milestone, man. That's awesome for you, dude. Thank you. Um, have you ever thought about doing like a partnership with another creator? I've tried. Um, I've tried to do it with the uh, what's this dude's name? I forgot. I do not remember. I think his name was uh. Okay, Cron or something like that. I'm not sure. I've I've hit them up a few times. I've I've joined a bunch of uh, TikToks, Twitch streams to see if they want to make videos together. Uh, but most of the time they don't follow me back, so they don't see my messages. Uh, but I've tried to do some content where they mix and match with my stuff and their stuff. Uh, not really a lot of <laughs> you know answer backs. Like you're like one of the first people to actually talk to me about TikTok, which is what I. I was like, sure, I'm down. Let me get your, let me show the world what my side of the world looks like, you know? So it was cool, but I, I never really connected with other creators like that, unfortunately. But hopefully one day I will. Um, yeah. I'd say the closest I have was with Raw Money. That's the closest stuff. But can't complain, you know? Can't complain. Um, so when it comes to, do you just make TikToks or do you have a YouTube channel? Do you? So I did YouTube for about a month or so. I made a couple of YouTube videos, like YouTube-esque videos. I, I had an intro. Um, I had like an actual plot. I showed the content, made an ending, added like a meme of the week. At first it was doing good because I was doing one of my previous popular content, which was the North Korean reviews. Mm-hmm. Um, but then it just kind of died down. I guess people didn't really want to stick with it. Personally, I didn't want to stick with it either because I was I wanted to focus more on TikTok. I feel like I'm going to get back into YouTube when I have more time that it, let, it lets me like do it. But right now, it's kind of hard to make a whole full-fledged YouTube video. I feel like YouTube takes a lot of time and, and dedication, um, which I, I can do. I just haven't set my mind to it yet because I'm focused on other things right now, considering I'm getting married in, in like eight months right now. I have, wow. a lot of things, I have a lot of things to worry about that are aside from YouTube. I got to worry about my future where i'm going to be moving you know it's a lot of stuff i just started my first career job like six months ago so i'm, I'm just like a little bit busy but once i settle down have my house have everything set i'm just going to go straight forward i'm going to start uploading my youtube do twitch maybe uh i did twitch for a couple times that's cool i had a, i had like four or five viewers i thought it was awesome uh twitch is cool i think i can do that uh what's the other platform so Instagram is also pretty good. I have a good follower base there. A lot of people follow me for my personal pictures and stuff and a couple of memes I upload there. I definitely upload my uh, community guideline violation videos there uh, mm-hmm. because they violate the guidelines, but TikTok doesn't, I mean, but Instagram doesn't uh, take them down, so I put them there. So 
it's more or less just like working with TikTok right now. I, I'm comfortable with TikTok, but in the future, I definitely want to expand my options, which is why I started with Snapchat. Now I have a way to blast notifications to my followers or same thing with Discord. I have some of my followers on there. I can send them to my followers. So if my page ever gets banned, I have a place to tell people, hey, this is the new page. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I have a, I have a good start, a, a good base for the future right now. That's my goal, at least. Well, first of all, congratulations on the new career and also getting Thank married, you. which is awesome. Yes, sir. Thank you. Now, are you ready to play a game? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So you are a pretty funny guy, so I want to put that to the test. I'm okay. going to give you a word, and you're okay. just going to try and make a joke about it. Okay. All right. First word, Gordon Ramsay. Gordon Ramsay? Yeah. Where did you put the fucking lamb sauce? That nah, that was the first thing that came to my head. Where's the lamb sauce? And it's just, it's just it's the funny part about Gordon Ramsay is when he, he calls people fucking donut. So one yeah. thing I would, every time I used to watch Gordon Ramsay, I would get like this donut that I had when I used to fly. I would just throw it at my wife. I would just literally throw it at her, like donut, donut, and she would just laugh and throw it right back at me. It was the funniest thing ever. Uh, but Gordon Ramsay. That's I love when he goes donkey. Is that which one? You bloody donkey! You bloody donkey! <laughs> well, there was an episode of Gordon Ramsay where he was roasting someone for undercooking something. It was like, oh, this cow is so fucking raw that I can still hear it mooing. No, <laughs> it hilarious. Well, Gordon Ramsay is, is is one of my favorite creators. I love Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> All right, next one. Let's go TikTok. TikTok. Yeah. Oh, really funny. Yeah. Something <laughs> I had to hit you with that one. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I had to hit you with that one. So. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. TikTok. Oh, Lord. TikTok. It's a cesspool of memes and creators doing dances. It's a fun, it's a fun lifestyle that TikTok is. But reality is, if you're not attractive, you ain't making it on TikTok. Take me for an example. Nah, I'm just That's not true. I'm going to make it. That's right. It's shit. So. <laughs> no, you're good. Anyone can make it. I'll let yeah. you track it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. Marshmallow. Marshmallow? Yeah. That one's hard because Marshmallow is one of my favorite artists. I don't know how to make a meme out of that. Hmm. What would I do? Okay, so I actually have a TikTok idea now that you just gave me that word. It's like, so you know the green screen filter where they put the eyes on the nose, right? Mm-hmm. Now I kind of want to get like a, like a, I want to make a sound where it's just someone singing and it just starts like yelling. Like, you know the Mr. Krabs meme? Yeah. It was money, money, money. And it just starts yelling. Think of that as a marshmallow, but it's just like little eyes in the mouth with the marshmallow. And then it just goes closer and closer and it just starts yelling because it's burning all life. I don't know. I might did make I, that a TikTok now that I think about it. Did I just create a new video for you? <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, follow me back. I'm, I'm pretty sure I, I got to follow you back on TikTok. No. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, definitely remind me. I got to follow you back. I have your Instagram, so I'm going to follow you back. Okay. But, uh, for sure. <laughs> All right, I'd last say, one. Go for it. Okay, last one, and I'm going to hit you with a little plot twist. All right. All right. Uh, let's go... Cheese balls. I actually made a text message one time um, where it was just a guy texting his girlfriend. And the guy says, hey, did you pick up my medicine? And the girl's like, no, I picked up something better. And then the guy says, what? I picked up uh, cheese balls. He's like, what do you do with cheese balls? And then she just starts spamming a bunch of ape emojis and says, ooga booga cheese balls. <laughs> and then I made that with the, with the random voice generator. And it somehow blew up how stupid that was. So now every time I hear the word cheese balls, I think of Ooga Booga cheese balls. With a bunch of ape emojis just surrounding that. Okay. Yeah, as weird as that sounds, but that's what I think about when I hear the word cheese balls. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, so one of my hidden talents is that I am a voice impersonator. So oh, really? I'm going to do a voice, and you have to try your best to copy it the best you can. Okay, go for it. But you have to tell me who it is before you can impersonate it. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> you ready? Go for it. We're going to be a world. It's going to be amazing. Oh, I agree with this. 
That's the 45th. <laughs> it's so, the 45th. <laughs> I, for one, can tell you that was an amazing impression. Uh, top of the line, high quality. I will say that uh, once again, thank you very much. I, that's what I'm saying. I'm, oh. I'm, I'll do a good Trump impression. <laughs> That right? Please tell me it wasn't like Elvis Presley or something. <laughs> um, it was. It was kind of a mixture between Elvis, like with Elvis, his voice is a little bit more deeper. Yeah. And then with Donald Trump, I don't know why I always do the hand movements. I always do all this stuff. Very articulate. People can hear me clearly. <laughs> too. Yes. You gotta do like that little, the little squishy little like, moves. You know, mm-hmm. like that. <laughs> so because you got Botox upon Botox. A lot of Botox, yeah. And a lot of spray, spray tan. Oh, jeez. Okay, uh, let's try. Ew, Brian, do you want some Kufin? Oh, that's, that's Stewie. <laughs> How do I do Stewie? Brian, do you think these jeans make my ass look fat? No. But Brian, I think they look great to me. What do you think? No, I'm, I'm a terrible Stewie. <laughs> I'm bad. You better do something you would say. <laughs> yeah, I actually did. Um, try doing a video of me doing voice impressions on Omegle, okay. and I did Stewie, and there's this little girl, and she's like, "Wait, is that Stewie?" I'm like, "Yes, how are you?" And she's like, screams, and she's like, "Oh, <laughs> okay, calm down." <laughs> you gotta do an Omegle like YouTube test where you just like say, "I'm going to take over the world." But I'll do it with my best friend, Brian. Just, you know, start using as much as you. <laughs> That's actually pretty funny. Okay. Uh, let's go. Homie, homie. I need no stoners again. Oh, that's Marge. Marge mm-hmm. says, <laughs> how do I do one? Oh, Mar, you forgot to take the trash out again. Now the birds are eating all their food. I'll do it tomorrow. But, homie, it needs to be done now. Yeah, I can. I can do a, a, a pretty... Sturdy Marge Simpson. That's what I say. Ow. <laughs> Ow. I used to say that a lot in middle school. <laughs> Classic. All right, last one. Wow, that was a pretty good impression, but I think we need to work on it. Is that Obama? Yep. Oh. <laughs> I do Obama. Let's let me see. My fellow Americans, it has come a time where we must gather together. To eat, sleep, and shit. No, I can't do it. I cannot do a Barack Obama. Holy shit. I cannot do a Barack Obama. <laughs> I tried my hardest. I'll give you that one. So eat, uh, sleep, and shit. <laughs> yeah, you have the rash, though. I can't. I can hear it in yours. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> I need to make a video about that now. I'm telling you. <laughs> Dude, dude, you gotta make like videos prank calling people with your voice, with your voice act, like just like straight up, like be Obama calling like a Pizza Hut or something. Like, what are you doing here, Mr. President? I could do that. <laughs> uh, all right, Brandon, I'm gonna give you the floor. Promote yourself. Promote myself. Well, if you like good random content, follow my page, Brandon Lakayo Five at TikTok. You know, I have a bunch of random things, a bunch of ideas. I'm always gonna get new stuff. My recent series was the TV series, The States. I thought that was something cool. I definitely want to keep that going. I like cars. As you can see, I have a cat, so I make cat content sometimes. <laughs> uh, but I like cars, so I make car content there. I like to get involved with other countries, talk about other countries. You know, if, if it comes to deep conversations, I'll make uh, videos about that. But if you like something as simple as a niche, I do have a page called at Fruitcake City on TikTok where it's just reading random text messages that shouldn't be real, but they're real quote unquote, or fake half the time. So that's where I read it with a really weird message. I sometimes make videos where I sing with that voice mm-hmm. filter just to see how it would sound. So if you're into weird requests that you want to hear in weird ways, follow my page. I'm always up for new content. I like to be engaged with my fans. As you can see, I'm doing a whole podcast with you. I like to be open with everyone. I like to see, pretty much hear what everyone's about. Um, I like pretty much everything. Just shoot me a shot and see what goes on. But we'll make some content together, you know? <laughs> yeah, pretty much me. It's all me. It's all him. Yeah. All right. Well, Brandon, thank you so much for taking your time. And hopefully, when you become big, rich, and famous, we can do this again sometime. Yes, sir. I'm always down, man. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks, man. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. Have a good one. You too.
bye bro